So why Kentera, you may ask? Why do we need a new software to do combustion related calculations? Well, engineering design process is quite complex. And in most cases, it can be divided into two categories, experimental and simulation based. Now in simulations, you can have zero dimensional, one, two, all the way to three dimensional solution strategies. So some engineering designs are complicated. They require 2D and 3D simulation techniques. But this also includes um, a 2D and a 3D simulation technique will also include complex phenomena like turbulence and flow instabilities. The 0D and the 1D, which is the zero dimensional and the one dimensional simulations, mainly focus on checking the design through fundamental principles of say um, conservation of mass, momentum and energy. And this for this zero D or zero dimensional and one D or one dimensional solutions is where Cantera is particularly useful. Now let me uh, explain uh, this whole concept of 0D, 1D, 2D, 3D, etc. So <clears throat> to do that, let's look at this slide. To explain the concept, I took these uh, images from uh, the website digitalengineering247.com. Here, um, assume that we have a room with some furniture and a fireplace. We would like to know the temperature at each location of the room when the fireplace is running. So the most detailed way would be to set up a 3D or a three-dimensional simulation, like the first picture to the left, where you model the entire room accurately and allow the hot fireplace to dissipate heat in the room. With a three-dimensional setup, we can look at each of the principal directions, which is length, width, and height and observe how the heat flows in each location of the room. However, this requires considerable um, computational resources and, and time. If we only want to look at the temperature distribution through the length and the height of the room, a 2D simulation is a more appropriate and an easier setup, which is what you can see in this central figure. There is length and there is height, but there is no width in this model. Here, we only take into, into account two directions instead of three. This simplifies the setup and makes the problem more solvable with limited time and computational resource constraints. Now, <clears throat> we can further simplify the problem. If we only would like to know the temperature distribution through the length of the room, then we can reduce one more dimension and go down to just a one dimensional simulation study. Here, we will only take the length of the room into account and look at how the heat is being dissipated in one direction. And that is why this is known as a 1D simulation, which is also shown here in the picture to the right the whole room has been sort of captured in, in just a length. There is no significant height or any width to, to this particular design. And we are only looking at how the heat is dissipating from, from the right to the left. And so what is the temperature distribution through the length of the room? And we do not really care about the temperature gradients and the height or the width, et cetera. So this, this kind of uh, simulation is far more simple as compared to uh, uh, a 2D or a 3D simulation. Now, on the same pattern, we also have something known as a 0D simulation. <clears throat> now you may ask what is a zero dimensional simulation? 
how can we have zero dimensions? Well, the answer is that here we do not consider the length, width, or the height of the space. Instead, we assume an average value for the entire room. So instead of calculating the temperature at different points in the room, we just calculate an average temperature for the entire room. Um, now, this may not be very useful in calculating the thermal profile inside each room. However, this way we can look at the entire system together, which in this case will mean the whole house. So now consider this picture on the, on the bottom, which says 0D. <clears throat> there are these three rooms, and this is a central heating fireplace. So if we have these three rooms, and we want to calculate the total energy that will be needed to maintain a certain average temperature in each of these three rooms, that is when a zero-dimensional setup will come in. And that is the utility of a zero-dimensional simulation. It lets you look at the whole system instead of just individual components to check on principles of global conservation of mass, momentum, and energy in this case. So using Kentera, we can set up wonderful zero-dimensional and one-dimensional simulations for a combustion problem at hand. Um, now let us look at the Kentera website. Uh, which contains some solved examples um, that, uh, that may give you an idea of what we just discussed. So let's open a browser and let's search Cantera. Okay, so that's the first website here. Let's go. This is the official Cantera website. This is an open source software, so everything here is freely downloadable um, so it is divided into certain segments there are tutorials and again there are different interfaces so python matlab uh, are the primary ones we however will be focusing on python so there are tutorials examples uh, instructions on installing and compiling which uh, we will go through uh, in detail in the next video and there is uh, an extensive documentation as well and i highly encourage all of you to, to go through uh, this website. So if we go to the Python section of examples, you see there are so many different examples on different topics. There is thermodynamics, kinetics, transport, reactor networks, um, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> for thermodynamics, you see these are mainly zero dimensional simulations. So you can have something like say, um, which would be an easier thing to pick up, let's say mixing.py. So this program here, <clears throat> it gives you the mixing of two streams. So there are uh, stream number one, stream number two with, with different species or different chemicals flowing um, in, in them. And when they mix, what will be the resultant mixture like? And so that is what this program shows you. And this is a zero dimensional simulation. So it just takes average values into account. And so similarly, I encourage you to go through this entire uh, website, just, just check out different sections of this website. Um, there is a very active community as well. And uh, you can sign up for, uh, for this group. You can post your questions. There are um, experts on this group who are very, very helpful. Um, and they can really help you understand concepts and troubleshoot problems. Well, so um, that is uh, all for this video. Now, um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.